to adulthood and late adulthood, particularly on the right-hand side of the graph, you see that light blue, dark blue. What that's looking at, that's looking at cancer, cardiovascular disease, inflammatory diseases. This is what's going to kill you when you're 70, 80, and 90 years old, okay? So our challenge for living, if you want to get to immortality, you got to get through 90, okay? That's the first step. So how do we do that? Well, when we look at the inflammasome, the activation of inflammatory markers, when we look at neurodegeneration, when we look at aging in general, cancer and infection and lower immunity, they have one thing in common. That thing that they have in common is called autophagy. Does everybody know what autophagy is? Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of hands, so I'm going to, okay. I'm not going to go over autophagy yet. So we recognize autophagy, but as we work our way through the autophagy process, we're learning. Remember, we just gave a Nobel Prize in 2016 to the researcher that described autophagy. This is a relatively new concept. We're just getting on top of it. And as we take a look at autophagy, what we know in the cell, there are multiple things that stimulate autophagy, heat, um, uh, exercise, uh, we can take a look at uh, many other pieces, but we start this autophagenic process in the cell. It creates what's called an autophagome. It encapsulates long-lived proteins and organelles and begins to digest them over on the other side when it hooks to the lysosome here, and we get what's called an autolysosome. Now, with the latest pandemic that we had, when you take a look at COVID, COVID actually attacks the autophagy process. COVID overstimulates the beginning of this, creating many autophagomes. At the same time, it blocks the, blo the linkage of the lysosome to the autophagome, so we don't get the digestion in the final part of the process unless you have upgraded autophagy from other sources. If you're a heavy faster, the, uh, um, we actually have a paper out of Berlin that shows human immune cells supplemented with spermidine stopped COVID transmission 85, 90, 92% of the time. So upgraded autophagy leads to improve, improved immune response, and this is where the autophagy process starts to work. Now, we're used to autophagy being in this thing that we call calorie restriction. Um, whether it's fasting or intermittent fasting, as we limit the number of calories coming into the cell, the cell says, hey, we need to clean ourselves up, and it starts that process. We've also seen a thing called memetics. We know that if we increase resveratrol, based on what Dr. Sinclair wrote in his book, Lifespan, we see an upregulation of autophagy. We know that exercise that works, and exercise works through this pathway here of AMPK, AMPK is an autophagy stimulator. Metformin works through the AMPK pathway too. So when you take metformin, it's working through the autophagy pathway. Rapamycin is, is blocking. So where autophagy is digesting the cell, it's breaking down. Metformin is building proteins up. Excuse me, mTOR. mTOR is building. So when we have nutrients coming in, mTOR turns on and makes proteins. When we shut this off, proteins stop and we can start to digest the bad ones. Well, we see spermidine over here. Is a, we've known about this molecule for a long time. It was first described by the guy that invented the microscope, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, back in 1698. Why Anton van Leeuwenhoek had his semen on a microscope slide, I don't know. The guy was obviously a freak. He should have given the microscope to his wife um, because he did not play with his toys well, or he played with his toys too much. Um, but... We've known about this molecule for a long time, but we've only begun to recognize what it does. We looked at it in cancer in the 1980s, but a researcher in Graz, Austria, saw that supplementing senescent cells with spermidine returned the senescent cell back to a healthy cell rotation. And this is where spermidine really started to get, this, get its, its, its feet in the ground. Now, the other thing that we see with spermidine, we have a, pub, a paper that we're going to publish later this year. If you take a mouse and you fast it, autophagy goes up. If you take a spermidine knockout mouse and you fast it, no autophagy. So we're getting ready to move autophagy from a mimetic down into a, a critical element in the autophagy pathway. Now, when, um, if we take a look at blue zones around the world, one of the things that we see in the blue zones, we see high spermidine diets in those zones. They're eating food that they largely raise themselves. They're not using industrial production of their food. When you we get our spermidine from wheat germ. We can't get wheat germ in the United States that we can get spermidine out of because of our industrial production practices. Um, so, but when you, listen, 
if you if you live in Loma Linda and you're part of the Seventh Day Adventist and you grow your own food, you're probably doing good. Okay, you're, that's why you're part of a blue zone. If you're not, we got to look at this as a nutrient. So this is what spermidine looks like. It's what's called a polyamine. So many of you may have heard of a thing called an amino acid. So that is an amino acid is nitrogens, carbons, hydrogens, and there's an acid attached to it. You break that acid off, it's called decarboxylation, and you wind up with a polyamine. And that's what it is. Um, we have a source of them in our body. Number one, we can form them de novo in the cell when we need them by working through some enzymatic pathways. We can eat it in spermidine-rich foods. Does anybody here eat natto? Any natto? Good on you. Okay, I don't know how you choke that stuff down, but, but good on you because it's very spermidine-rich. Um, or you can supplement it through food. What are the benefits of upgraded autophagy from spermidine? Well, number one, there's tumor suppression. And this all comes from a paper called Spermidine in Health and Disease, which was published in Cell. If you like, we'll send it to you. But we see, sper we see tumor suppression because the increased autophagy causes that senetic cell to return back to normal, not turn into a cancerous cell. We also see an immune regulation. Again, going back and looking at COVID and other infectious diseases, as you clean the cells up, we see improved immunity. It's one of the benefits from this. We see cardio protection through the upregulation of mitophagy in the heart. So the mitochondria in the cells in the heart need cleaned up. Our mitochondria has their own DNA. They reproduce on their own. When we need mitochondria, the body signals, they begin to reproduce. But we don't want to reproduce bad mitochondria. We want to reproduce the good ones. So through mit mitophagy, we clean up the bad mitochondria and we get cardio protection out of this. We also get a nitric oxide uh, role so we see an improvement in endo and, uh, and, and endothelial stem cells and endothelial cells so there's there's multiple benefits there we have neuroprotection we have a study that came out of Berlin thank you by the way we have a study that came out of Berlin that showed the people with dementia who took spermidine stopped the development of dementia now we haven't reversed it yet but we've certainly stopped it through supplementation and finally there's an increase in stem cell production I, I don't have light on my screen. There we go. Okay, so stem cells. So if you've ever taken spermidine, about half of our people tell us three to four weeks, they start to see their fingernails grow like crazy and their hair change. That's the upregulation of endothelial st uh, stem epithelial stem cells. Uh, and that's what's going on there. Now, we just finished a study. We're going to talk more about this tonight. We're doing a press release at 8.30 tonight where we took 10 individuals here in the United States and put them in a 30-day trial of our 6-milligram product. All participants had blood work done prior 15, 30, and 45 days after. So we did blood work 15 days after they stopped taking the supplement. And then the blood test included nine measurements of blood sugar, inflammation, and lipids. 75% of all quality of life metrics showed improvement during the investigation. Men's fasting, men's fasting insulin levels improved. All the sugar markers improved. All the lipid markers improved. Our inflammatory markers were largely neutral, which kind of surprised us, but this was a very small study. It's a pilot study, but we were very happy with what we saw. We see glucose improve. We see hemoglobin A1C improve. We saw improvement, again, in all the glucose markers and all the lipid markers. I'm hustling here because I've got a timer telling me I've got to go faster. So when we look at spermidine and we look at autophagy, we definitely get all of these benefits here. Whether we are just working with it, goes down to arginine and nitric oxide metabolism, which helps with blood pressure and chiromyocyte stiffness. Again, so all these things come into play.